Welcome to Framework Fortune and welcome back Framework Fortune community. It's time for the second episode of Day Trader Reacts. Where me, a day trader, reacts to something I find interesting. Or if you guys have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. I'll probably react to that too. But today we're going to react to Ross Cameron's live stream trading. This was from this morning. And he made, what is it, $60,000 on BKKT. Now, if you joined my live stream this morning, then, you know, we were all over BKKT. Some of you in the chat actually got it before I did. Shout out to Orlando, making a nice profit. So I ended up making about 280 bucks on BKKT myself. Wasn't the best entry in the world, but I was able to make it work, and we'll go over that later tonight in the last rip. Let's go ahead and dive in to this reaction. I'm going to put my little headphone in so I can hear what this fella's saying. Now, Ross, of course, been around the YouTube space for a long time. I know of him. I don't know him personally. I'm not affiliated with Warrior Trades or any of that. His videos for entertainment purposes only. And if Ross wants to, you know, hit me up because he disagrees, then he's welcome to come on my channel or I'll even come on his if he wants to debate if there's something I say in this video. Because if you have been following me, you know the filter doesn't exist with me. But let's get into it. I've never actually seen one of his live stream trades. This will be the first time I'm seeing it. I've just seen a little bit of his content. It's been around a long time. So intraday orange line, I'll mark right there, 112, pivot yesterday, one. So he was looking at DWAC, it looks like, first off in the morning. And I'm not going to react to this whole two and a half hour live stream. I'm just going to skip through parts and find the trades. And we were looking at that too. I think DWAC, of course, is going to continue to be hot. I doubt Trump is going to let the media not cover it. So there will continue to be some type of movement out of this. Up and down, all around, expect lots of volatility. 15, and then next pivot, 121, and then, you know, you're getting back up into this area. Uh, it, it's tricky. I'll, I'll say without a doubt that this reverse fairly hard. Um, off that squeeze to 175 you know I mean it did it went from 175 all the way down to 82 bucks bounced and then down to a low of 77 and then back up bounced to 115 that's a lot of range after hours was down around 77 now it's back up over 100 so these are uh, big moves big swings for sure uh, and it's one that we'll be watching closely, I, I would think. However, I, I think if we're going to be realistic that, that the move has already happened and that the big move was these two days here and this was the top. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a, probably a good... Good uh, idea. It ran from $10 to 175 in two, two days. That's more than likely the top. No doubt about that. But, like I said, this hype and volatility, we'll see. And so with that in mind, I think that these this move in here could be heavily shorted as traders, um, you know, some traders apply some FOMO, catch some FOMO, and, and try to ride the momentum, while perhaps smarter traders recognize that this really is a volume this is a top uh, parabolic top and it's very unlikely that it actually is able to reclaim those levels in the next you know day or two so so that's what we've got there on dw yeah i pretty much agree with that i don't know if it's my headphones or his audio quality but his audio quality is uh you know this dude's supposed to be a millionaire like looking at <laughs> Look at him at my background, although mine's a little bit of a mess right now, but looking at my background compared to, uh, you know, I like the on-air side in there. That's nice. Not well lit. Of course, that's nothing to do with trading. I'm just pointing it out because if, 
I was as rich as he's supposed to be, I would probably put a little bit more effort into my backgrounds. But hey, to each down. I want to look at his charting here and see what, what his setup is. Looks like he's using scanners. And these are probably, I'm guessing, trade ideas because these look pretty customized. But scanners are not part of his broker. I'm, I think his broker may be Lightspeed. I'm not sure. So it looks like he has a daily chart up down here. Right here is a five-minute chart. It's right at the top. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. And then this other one seems to be a one-minute. Now, this one down here, I believe, is a 10-second. That's, that's really <laughs> a 10-second chart. I mean, with a one-minute chart, I, I don't see the relevance of why you would need a 10-second chart at all. But, you know, it's his setup. I'm just kind of baffled by the 10-second chart there. Let's see. I'm in 34 minutes so far. No trades. I'm uh, not exactly sure what time he started at. at his, his setup here is it's kind of rough to look at. He's got his position box up here. Of course, he's got his whole uh, warrior trade stuff up here, but well, you can't see it. It's off the screen. But yeah, this is, uh, I don't know. It's, it's just such a different setup than mine. So it could just be me, but it just seems very thrown together. Whatever works. And a stock like this, you need multi-point multi, multi -point breakouts. You can't just, you can't just get 20 cents or 30 cents. 20 cents or 30 cents is like taking two or three cents profit. That's not worth it. Because when you get in, you're risking a dollar a share at least, maybe $2 a share. So, you know, if you got in there for the break of 12, right now, 12, you've got 12.11 on the bid, 12.75 on the ask. You've got a big spread. I mean, it's, that's not enough. You need on something of this price range, like a five point setup. Uh, I'm going to have to, you know, maybe not on DWAC today, but DWAC on Friday. I only took four shares of it and made, what was it, $320. So you don't need, <laughs> you don't need a, a whole lot of shares if it's got all the potential to rip. And the DWAC had that on Friday. Watching it today, you know, it's, all the big explosions happened. So we got to give it a couple of days to calm down and see if it's going to find some support or if it's just going to keep being volatile. So right now, it's just calm, cool. Don't lie, Ross. Tell everybody the truth. You just, you just, pack, you just popped open a Michelob Ultra there. I know it was. Don't tell me it's a cool. collected waiting i'm ready to strike but i'm waiting i want to make sure that i get a really good trade it's better to take two or three really good trades than take a hundred so-so trades because of course every trade you take carries risk he didn't explain that at all <laughs> he just said it was better to take less trades than to take a whole lot of decent trades so the logic there is take more, take better trades and don't take all the extra trades that are garbage. So basically just take better trades, take better setups. Right now is not good enough for taking big size. So even if I had the buying power, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be safe. I'd be risking $2 or more a share. Okay, now he's pulled up so, BKKT. Is there a catalyst on BKKT? Yes. <laughs> this is a very good catalyst. Go read it. Hurry up. If it breaks 11, I might be a buyer. So I'll take a starter there at 11 on BKKT. And I'll add over 12. This one's hitting the scans. 1250 is my next add. So this is about being disciplined. One good trade. Watching now for the break of 13 on BKKT. Add is 12.75. He got a pretty good, well, I mean, getting it to break 11, I don't know what he was waiting for, for 11. The break of 10 would have been where I'd have been trying to get in. So he... And then look to ride that momentum up to 13. I haven't sold any yet. I'm still looking to add. This is a fresh gapper. Buying the dip at 12.38 there for the breakthrough 12.55 and taking half off at 12.60. 
He just said he was buying the dip and, and then taking some off in like the same second. Buying the dip at 12.38 there for the breakthrough 12.55 and taking half off at 12.60. <laughs> yeah, so that was in, that's an interesting play. Buying, buying the dip there at 12.38 and then as soon as... I mean, you see, I, I guess this is what he's using the 10 second for, but what was the point of taking some there? I mean, I, I guess he got hesitant. Because maybe he thought he took too much. I'm not sure. You know, you never know what another person's thinking. But he was adding into his position all the way up. Which, you know, averaging up is not bad. Uh, it's definitely better than averaging down. But taking that, I mean, he, he's using a bigger account. You can see already he's up 18000 just off of this little bit of a rip. So I don't know how many shares he's bought. He doesn't have a uh, share size anywhere on the screen. So I have no clue how many shares he's taken, but it's obviously quite a bit to be up 18,000 off of a dollar or two rip. I'm a little cautious on it. The high is 13, my new order goes at $13. Like if you've got that big of a count and you're up 18 grand, just lock into 18 grand, let this pullback happen and jump back in. Like why is he holding right here for this? And is he, is he going to add again? Nice job. Uh, so he's in from 1030. Good job. Nice. Shout out to the uh, person in the chat who was in this and probably called it out because I saw Ross uh, looked at the chat and said, I'll check it out when he uh, pulled up BKKT. So whoever was in Ross's chat, shout out to you for calling this play out that early. I'll hold a thousand shares with a stop uh, at break even. So he's got to <laughs> switch to this account. Switch to this account. Okay, so he's trading on two accounts. This is a. He's got a lot going on here. There's a lot going on for just one stock. Like uh, I don't know. This setup. It's. I'm not usually not OCD, but this setup is. It's bothered me. But he says he's got a thousand left. He's holding. So I mean a thousand. At twelve dollars, it's twelve grand. He just put in this trade, which he already locked out. Yeah, it looks like he locked it out already. That that most of that profit. So good, he did lock some of it out at least. And look for another trade. Thank you for calling that to my attention. Taking a little more profit at uh, thirteen twenty. The high of that candle is thirteen ninety. On something like this, I like to take profit as it goes a little higher. <laughs> what I like about it is, of course, the price. It's more, much, much more affordable. He's talking. <laughs> he's talking about how this is much more affordable with his couple hundred thousand dollar account. He's throwing big share sizes at anything. Now I chased it a little bit. The initial entry down there around ten, ten thirty. I jumped in at 11. Oh, okay. Okay, so he realized he realized that that was a, a bad entry. Hindsight, you know, it was 2020. So that was pretty much one trade, uh, one entry. Hold on a second. Let's see. His dog is starting to bark. That is not Sam. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what is, the, is, what is his EMAs he's got on here. On this chart, he's got the VWAP, and he's got an, MM, he's got an MA. I don't know what it is. There he has an MA or two two moving averages two moving averages it's there but one two three looks like there's one more indicator that, that line dash one so there's actually something I'm not seeing I'm not exactly sure what he's using there his daily chart uh, so he got the VWAP on the daily chart hmm and then on his 10 second chart he only has two indicators so I don't know what indicators he's all using besides the VWAP. And I don't know what time frame those moving averages are without seeing what his settings are. I'm assuming they're pretty close. They can't be, like, I don't see a 200-day maybe unless it's this purple one, but I doubt it. This might be a 50. I don't know. There's a 20,000 share buyer down there in the 70s. Volume weight average price is 11.83. So I can keep holding with a stop. He said volume weighted average price is at 11, uh, whatever, 11.83. That's the VWAP. 
I, I don't know why he's saying it the hard way. I mean, even in the heat of the moment, you know, he say all kinds of crazy stuff, but that just was like a lot to take in all at once. The volume weighted average price is 11.83, but like the VWAP's at 12. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. It seems uh, he's he's a very data driven person. It looks like so it's got to be to the everything to the cues except for his setup. Apparently, <laughs> I'm not letting it set. I'm not letting this go about this setup. It's wonky. Uh, in the 1270s, I'm gonna dip trade this at um, 12.95. So just add it at 12.95, and my next add will be 13.25. I'm trying to time the first one minute candle to make a new high. That's a, that's a risky move. Luckily this played out as a double bottom uh, on the five, let's see, or is that the one minute? Yeah, it played out as a little double bottom on those two candles, those two wicks, right the same way and then turned bullish over the bearish candle. So that's an engulfing, bullish engulfing candle. But that was a bit of a risky trade to take it right there because his indicators are back down here and it was cracking below 13, a hold number. So he did. it does look like he timed it right, but that was that was a little bit ballsy. And I'm going to add there at 27. I took some profit at 30, then added back at 27. My next add will be 13.75. We'll see if it breaks over 14. When If this candle doesn't push up, over the tops of these two bodies, this green candle and this red candle. If your rebound candle doesn't push over those, it did, but it wicked back down and pulled back down under it. So you, you'd really want to see that break above that. And he took the entry like right here somewhere. Because if, if it didn't hold up here, it was going to dump. And I don't even think he's looked at the news yet, or he didn't say anything about the news. 13.05 on the ask. So we had a high of about 1350. This is an ABCD pattern right now, where we have support at 69 and the high is 59. So I'll add at 97 there, buying the dip off of that uh, support level and hold 3,000 shares. So not as big of a trade on this one, reducing my size a little bit. My average is 1298. Yeah. The high of this candle is 59. So new order, uh, 13.75. Watching for a dip off of 69.70. So that's a flat bottom setup that you see there. So on this one, this is... Flat bottom, same thing as the, uh, the double bottom I was kind of talking about already right there with those two wicks. But a flat bottom, I mean, it's just, all it is is support holding up right there. There's a price where buyers are coming in and holding the price up. Sellers can't push them up. There's not enough sellers to get through those buyers. But the problem you have at this moment on this pattern is the buyers are not willing to buy over that line. So that's the resistance. So, you, I mean, buying there at the support, this is like the third, yeah, that would been like the third confirmation, but that's on the one minute too. The longer the time frame, the stronger the time frame. So on the five minute, looking at this five minute here, I would not probably have been taking the trade in this consolidation personally. Because another pattern you could draw, and you could draw a sloping channel. So you just start from there and draw your downtrend, and then draw your support lines, and then it's got that sloping channel. It does look like it's coming close to this EMA, this indicator here on the one minute, but I mean, this 10 second chart is, <laughs> I don't know, it's just, it just seems like too much. This starts to get into more active trading. 37,000 share buyer, see that? The 37,000 share buyer that just popped up. Now there's a 50,000 share seller at 50. So there you got a bullish engulfing candle again. So, and this is what I kept seeing this morning, why I got in and why I held it as long as I did because even though there was selling, there's always going to be selling no matter the rip, whether it's a small rip or big rip. It's how stocks move. You have buying and selling the transactions. Seeing seeing this little pullback and then a little bullish engulfing, getting rejected, and then another pullback, and then coming back off of that same support with another bullish engulfing. Like those, You're getting the signs like, hey, this thing is about to explode here. 
Will it break that level? If it does, we know 59 is our uh, apex. Fancy words for a man with fancy hair. There's some sellers here at 40. I'm gonna take a little more profit off the table at 38. I'm gonna let it dip and then put an order at 15, uh, sorry, 14, uh, 50, 1350. So there's, another, so there's another order. So, so far he's put in, just on this one stock, at least six or seven orders. Now, if you're starting out as a new trader or, you know, you're trading with a small account size, I don't know how you're going to learn anything from this. Because the positions he's taking, it, he, he's scalping with large position size, on these little moves, he's not, he didn't get none of this rip, right? He's just he, he didn't get into the break here, and he just scalp up, drop down, scalp up, drop down, scalp up. You can do that if you have a huge account, but if you're on a cash account and you've only got two thousand dollars or a thousand dollars, you can't sit there and do that. You got to be getting in plays and taking the profit. So you wouldn't want to be like if you come in and follow what he's doing with only a little bit of money. I mean, how much money would you have made there? Not that much. Whereas if you would have caught this, like the one guy who caught it at 1030 on the entry as it was building up, you see that volume. Like, look at all this buying volume coming in. No selling volume so far from 9 to 905 here. Straight buying. Candles moving up. Obvious upward pr price action. And that's why that dude caught it. He probably saw it on one of his scanners or something. And you got that big buy and pop. So if you got a thousand dollars, and you grab a hundred shares at ten thirty, and then you hold this up, you hold this up to the thirteen fifty area. If you could hold to that high, even if you just hold it to twelve, ten to twelve on a hundred shares, two dollars uh, profit, two dollars profit a share, two times a hundred, two hundred bucks, right? So you got to get those bigger moves. Like like twenty five thousand is a lot of money, but right the there, amount of the break capital he's using to make this 25,000 uh, I I don't know how big his account is but as much as I've seen him trade I know he's for sure on margin uh, he's over the PDT rule no doubt you know he's got to have a pretty big account to be doing this so like, if you if you want to learn how to be a scalper with large amount position sizes you know it looks like the, this is the guy for you but if you're starting now and you're trying to grow a small account, and, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I can't imagine in his small account challenges that he would do the same thing right here instead of either catching this earlier or catching this for one entry off of the bounce here for the breakout. So looking to add for the breakthrough 1350 and then a squeeze. There you go. And you always want to take profit into that level and then add back over 75.85. Adding at 75 now for the squeeze through 40. No, see, what that I don't get that. I don't get why he keeps doing that. Why are you locking out profit? Like, clearly, I mean, it's not a bad thing to lock out profit at resistance. But he's, he's locking the profit out after the stock has broken over the resistance and then just hopping right back in it. Why not just stay in it if it's breaking the resistance? I mean, if that entry was that quick where in a split second you were like, ah, I'm going to hop out, but I'm going to hop back in. Just stay in. Like, what was the point of doing that in that split second? I don't know. I don't get what he's doing with that. Like, it just seems it just seems extra. Like, <laughs> extra trading, extra work. And, and, you know, it is one trade on one stock. And they, in the beginning of this, I think he was saying – you know, you just want to look for two or three good trades, but he's not taking two or three good trades on this. He's took like five trades so far. So holding right now 4,000 shares, reducing my size and looking to do a dip trade. Yeah, so he had 4,000 uh, at like 14 or 13. Now at this point, fifty to $60,000 of capital he's using to scalp in this little area. It's not. It's not good for new traders. Like you, I don't know. I don't know what he's try, How he's teaching people to do this with small amounts of money. It's a bit of a, a top and then a reversal. So this could be a dip opportunity. But remember why it's so important. Adding at thirteen fifteen. So bought the dip there thirteen fifteen, and for the pop back up to thirteen fifty. 
Um, the reason it's important to take profit on these is because you never know how high it's going to go. I'm taking the loss on um, that ad. Watching added back at 88 and 96. About 15 minutes to the bell. That 20,000 share added there at 30. 70,000 share buyer on the level two right there. See the 70,000 shares? So there are some big buyers on this stock. That's great to see. Now this is a perfect setup uh, for the breakout. Uh, we rejected off of 14 and we've rejected off that level now twice where it hit a high and then pulled back. So I don't know if these are dip um, dip traders, but these are good to see. So he's lo it looks like he's locked in about 29,000 and he he's used at least 100,000 so far in capital at least I'm, I'm estimating and I'm low I'm low balling on that estimate because we know that one trade alone was sixty thousand dollars <laughs> worth of capital all right so added there at 60 let's see if this just squeezes right up to three dollars next add would be 75 so added at 71 then 85 and 90 So let's watch over 285. You've got 20 million shares of volume on this. Taking a little off the table in the 80s to pay myself. It's the right thing to do. New order goes at $3. This was an extended entry. It's called a half dollar, whole dollar entry. The high is 86. Holding 3,500 shares. New order at three. Watching for dip entries dips off of 250 starter at 53 buying the dip that's off of 250 so buying the whole dollar now to add all right so i've lost count of his trades at this point i don't know how many trades he's took uh, he's, he's only traded two stocks but his trades are a, a large amount of trades too it looks like he got about 85 Hundred there on GRNQ. I actually took a loss on GRNQ, but I, I don't think I think this one was almost when I started live streaming because I think he must be Eastern time. BKKT still watching. Oh, the chaos! The chaos in my brain. We got GRNQ charts over here, and we got BKKT all over here. But this chart's like kind of like squished over here, and and he's got this news scanner up here for some reason that doesn't show news. Not sure what that's about. And then there's a chart behind my head. But like, God, man, this setup. Ah, seeing him pull both of these stocks up at the same time. Are they the same candle, the same charts? Yeah, they're the exact same charts. So they must have this all attached in one. Yeah, it does. You can see the red there. That's the links. Whatever platform this is. So they can move these around in one block, I guess. But, man, that's a lot of charts to be looking at all at once for two stocks. Where would I be a buyer? We'd have to break through 14, 14.10 for a move up to 14.50. They're so he's waiting. See, that's what I'm not getting. Like he's waiting to become a buyer at higher prices. I know it's because he's looking for the resistance breaks for the new the next price range up. But like, why were you not a buyer here on this bounce and like holding this up to the resistance, letting it play towards the resistance? Like, why are you waiting to get in over 14? Or like when he first got in this. Uh, after the initial rip, you know, he, he got in back here and got he got in the, he got profits out of these candles here in the consolidation, which this is only a dollar range basically besides where those wicks went. So I so I don't know because see like if you were looking for that 14 entry and this wick just went up a little bit higher, it could have faked you in there. Whereas if you're already in down here off of the bounce, then you're not going to get scared out right away by this little pullback. That's all I'm going to review because it is, like I said, another hour and a half. He's not, he keeps saying nine minutes. He just now said nine minutes to the bell. So he's still not even the market open. You're up 40 grand on the day before market open. Oh, what are you doing? Why are you still trading? Take the 40 grand. I mean, 
probably don't even need it, but just take it, go about your day, man. You're you're a millionaire. Because I don't think, this is my honest opinion, I don't, I don't think it would be easy to learn from this guy when it, the chaos <laughs> and overcomplication. But I'm not going to knock him too hard. Overall, I mean, he did what he's supposed to do by getting in, locking in profits when you got him. Uh, he's able to make quite a bit. I'm assuming a lot of winning trades. Couldn't really see his position sizes or anything anywhere on the screen, so I'm not sure how many of those trades he took were wins, how many were losses, but definitely more than two or three trades. I mean, you can count it, you can say that you've only traded two stocks, but you took like Ross, you took like probably 10, 15 trades in that span on the same two stocks. So that's quite a lot of trading. But you made the forty thousand, you know, go about your day. Go go take your dog on a walk. Turn off that on air sign. You know, take that dog out there, get him out there in the park. You need some sun anyway. Look how pale you are. That's why. <laughs> that's why he's got the lights off in the room. If he has the lights on for too long inside, he'll get sunburnt because he's so pale. <laughs> I'm not one to talk, but it was. I thought it was funny. So, if you like these reaction videos, if you found it enjoyable, or maybe you learned something, or maybe you just want to see me be somewhat of an a-hole to other traders hit that like button let me know down in the comments below more reaction videos and if you haven't yet think about subscribing we also have the framework fortune crypto channel which we're doing all kinds of crypto stuff over there been making some nice monies off of the sheebs and check out hh traders channel where he's doing his live streams every morning I'll see you guys later tonight for the last rip. Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time.